This week we're in the upper part of Bath City Centre and behind me here is Milsom Street. Milsom Street is one of the main thoroughfares through the city centre, it's one of our main shopping streets, but this was all originally built as residential property. You'd barely know that today looking at it because everything has been changed to shops, but there are still some apartments above some of these old shops. We're still filming in lockdown, but by the time we post this video, many of these shops will be open again. It's another bright and blue skied sunny day in the upper part of Bath. And we're actually here on George Street. So coming up on the left hand side ahead of us is Edgar's. Now Edgar's opened at the end of last year, November, 2020. And they are a luxury food store and they specialize in seafood, fish, and other bits of pasta and things like that. Some really lovely stuff in here. Uh, and they've got a really lovely unit, but we're gonna pass behind them into Bartlett Street. Now, I always think of antiques in Bartlett Street. You might just see the sign there, the Antiques Centre. Uh, but first on the right hand side, it's same, same, but different. Again, you can see this is closed at the moment. But they will be open again for outside seating, uh, theoretically from April 12th. Uh, same, same, but different has been here for as, certainly as long as I've been in Bath, which is 11 years now. Uh, it's a lovely cafe which has got a very strong local following. Next door to them is Yen Sushi. Yen Sushi is my favourite place for sushi in Bath. It's a conveyor belt restaurant and everything is made fresh in their kitchen here. If ever I need sushi, this is the only place I go. Although having said that, there are some really good sushi places in supermarkets nowadays. Um, but if I want to sit down and have some decent sushi, this is the best place to go in town. Up ahead though is the um, antique centre. Actually, I'll come back to that in a sec because here is Dos Dedos. Dos Dedos is a tequila bar and apparently Dos Dedos means two fingers and I've been trying to find out exactly what that is a reference to. I thought maybe it was a measure of the tequila. I've still got to find out. I'll come back to that another time. Um, but they do some nice food in there, some small plates. Um, Bath has this really strong tradition for small plates. But the antique centre here is just a real Aladdin's cave in Bath. It's got lots of different franchises in it, so everybody specialises in something different. Um, there's a lady at the front here that does porcelain, there's jewellery, there's silverware, and there's a huge amount of knowledge in here about the antiques that they're all selling. I once tried to sell some old stuff to the guy who has a silverware place, and he just wowed me with all his silverware knowledge. Um, it goes all the way through to the other side of the building, but we're going to head along St Andrew's Terrace and actually we're right alongside Cafe Luca. This is kind of a concept store. It's called The Loft and Cafe Luca is sort of just this side of the uh, shop. Um, it's a dog friendly cafe. They have two amazing cakes and they've got some really nice quiches and salads. It's just one of those places I really like to go on a summery afternoon and sit outside and drink something sparkling. They're next door to the back entrance of the Boston Tea Party. Uh, Boston Tea Party is all across the south of England. Uh, it's a series of cafes. They do some really lovely breakfasts in here. This is actually their second outlet in Bath. Their first one, you might remember from our Kingsmead Square tour, which we did a few weeks ago. But this one is actually a lot bigger. They've got a lot more space to sit. And we'll see that on the other side as well shortly because that's their back entrance. But coming up on the left here is the Burtonette Kitchen. You may remember Richard Burton that I mentioned in our Union Passage tour a couple of weeks ago because we passed the Burtonette Bakery. Now the Burtonette Kitchen is their cookery school and they started this when they moved to Bath and they started teaching people to bake bread. But they were very popular with the locals and the locals all started asking for some of their baked products. So they started selling it out of the front here just on Saturdays to start with and then eventually they got a shop in town. They had two shops at one point but now there's just one and it's kind of run as a separate business, but all the bread and all the pastries, all the products in there baked to Richard Burtonette's uh, recipes. Now, if we leave Burtonette Kitchen behind us, we're gonna head up towards the assembly rooms and we're gonna do a big loop around the assembly rooms. The assembly rooms was a venue that was built by John Wood the Younger in 1770. John Wood the Younger and John Wood the Elder were a father and son team who really made Bath look the way that it does today. They had this grand plan for the city, and in fact, by the time John Wood the Younger built this, his father had already passed away, which I'll mention again a little bit later. The assembly rooms was a place for public gatherings. Now, this was originally known as the upper assembly rooms. There was a lower assembly rooms, but unfortunately that's not there in there, that one 
trickle down in the early 20th century. That was actually the most popular one originally, but this is the only one that's still standing. And today it's owned by the National Trust. And it's still used for public events. They use it for occasionally for things like trade shows and fairs, and of course, filming. Very recently here, they've been filming a new version of In Pursuit of Love, which is a famous book by uh, one of the Mitford sisters. But also they did film a scene here from Bridgerton. And it was one of the ballroom scenes uh, in one of the earlier episodes. And it was filmed in the tea room, which is actually this building just behind me. Now, that's not actually a tea room today. The cafe is in what used to be the card room, which is in the back of the building here. So when you go in, you can see the ballroom, the octagon, the tea room, and then you can go and have your cup of tea and cake in the cafe, which was the card room. And there's also the fashion museum, which is in the basement. But we're going to go around the other side of the assembly room, so we'll see it again in a few minutes. In fact, we'll go all the way around the edge. And as you can see, it's made of the characteristic bark stone, which is an oolitic limestone. Again, I'm going to say a bit more about that shortly. But firstly, on the right here, Henry's. Now, this used to be a French restaurant but they changed hands a few years ago. And this is now owned and run by a local chap called Henry Scott. And he's worked with chefs all around the country, uh, all around the world, and picked up some amazing recipes and it's all focused on fine dining. Now, next door though is a uh, big bottle shop. And this is a venue that we work with on some of our tours. Uh, these guys specialize in great wines, but also in small plates and uh, this, one of the small plates that they do is uh, bath chaps, which is a historic dish, which uh, we include on our tours. But we're gonna keep going up ahead of us. This used to be a vintage shop and a, a uh, vintage cafe called Bee's. And Bee was wonderful. She uh, sadly had to let go of the, prop of the property and the guys from Beckford's took it over and started making it into what it is today. They've done an amazing job in there. Their basement cafe and restaurant is incredible. Um, but as you can see, we're still alongside the assembly rooms here on the left. And what I'm saying about the limestone, people often say this is sandstone because of the color. It's not, it's called an oolitic limestone. Oolitic refers to the fact that it's made from oolites or oolis, which are tiny specks of marine animals, creatures that have died in the oceans and their remains have been ground up by the ocean currents and they've all fallen on the ocean floor. And they've mixed with lime, which is what forms when water is heated. So when the sun heated the surface of the shallow ocean, the lime formed and also fell from the ocean floor. And all these ingredients mixed together to create this oolitic limestone. And there's a huge amount of it in this part of the country. And in the 18th century, it was really quarried extensively to build Bath and make it look the way that it does today. Incidentally, lime is very similar to what you get in your kettle when you boil your kettle and you have to scrape all that lime. Now, you can see the signs in the windows here for the Fashion Museum. Uh, and I also mentioned earlier that this is owned by the National Trust. The National Trust are actually taking over this building uh, in a few years' time. And I believe that the Fashion Museum are looking for new premises because the National Trust are going to make this into a Georgian experience. The city council have been operating this building uh, for as long as I've known, uh, but the National Trust are going to take over the operational side of things here. And you're going to be able to go in and see where all the movies like um, In Pursuit of Love and, and where Bridgerton was filmed. And actually also there was a lot of scenes in here from Persuasion, Jane Austen's Persuasion, uh, which was filmed a few years ago. But we are going to head now towards the circus. And just before we do, we'll cross the street, hopefully avoiding the traffic. So we can just have a quick look at the Museum of East Asian Art. This is one of Bath's less known museums. It doesn't get a huge amount of attention, but it's a lovely, lovely venue um, and well worth a visit if you're in town. They're only open Wednesday to Saturday each week. So when you come, make sure you're here at the end of the week. A beautiful collection that we've been gathered together over the years and put together very, very carefully. But ahead of us here is the circus itself. Now, no flying trapeze, no clowns, no ring masters in this circus. Circus is actually from a Latin word referring to something which is round. And as you can see, 
the circus is a complete circle. We'll just let this bike park. Uh, get in trouble here. And then we'll cross into the middle where you can see there are trees. Actually, there used to be more trees. In fact, in the 1800s, there was a small formal garden here. Um, but then in the Second World War, some of the trees were destroyed when uh, a bomb landed here. And actually, there are the remains of a crater that you can just about see in the ground. But you really get an idea here of the beauty of the limestone. Now, John Wood the Elder built the circus, or at least he started building it, because he died in 1754, which was when this section over here on the right was only just being finished. Or at least the foundations were just being finished. Uh, so the rest of this was completed by uh, the early 17, uh, the late 1760s by his son, John Wood the Younger. It's completely round and actually it's built on the same parameters as Stonehenge because John Wood was obsessed with the ancient stories and legends of this area. And he did a big survey on Stonehenge. So the ditch at Stonehenge that surrounds the stone circle is on the same uh, measurements as we have here at the circus. Um, the style of the building though is the, I, um, it, 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 there are all three great orders of architecture included in the building work. On the ground floor you can see the Doric order with the plain capitaled pilasters. On the first floor you can see the Ionic order with the ram's horn style in the capitals of the pilasters. And on the top floor you can see the Corinthian order with the acanthus leaved capitals. But then up on the balustrade you can also see the acorn statues which was a reference to the story of King Bladed who founded the city and we'll share that whole story with you as part of our tour. But to finish, I want to quote one of my favorite authors and playwrights, a man called J.B. Priestley, who was from the North, and he loved this stone so much. He said that the truth is that there is no color that can describe it. Even when the sunlight is obscured and the light is cold, these walls are still faintly warm and luminous, as if they knew the trick of keeping the lost sunlight of centuries glimmering about them.